Hey, my name is Brian Nell. I'm a mortgage loan officer with Premise Mortgage. I want to tell you that I absolutely love being a member of the Spread the Positive Network. It's such a great mission and helps bring so much positivity to our community. It's truly be a pleasure and a part of what they do. There are a lot of ways to navigate financing a home. And in markets like this, having the advice of a trusted local professional is key to making sure you get the right advice for your specific circumstances. Whether you're interested in the purchase of a new home, second home, or have a need for a refinance, I'd love to earn your trust. If I can help you nail your mortgage, call me at 615-243-3976 or visit nailyourmortgage.com. Premise Mortgage is a subsidiary of Premise Bank, a member of FDIC, equal housing opportunity. As always, all loans are subject to approval. Premise Mortgage, NMLS number 189-4879. Hello and welcome back to Conversations in Faith. Guided by Grace. I'm Jen. <laughs> I'm Ashley. And back there making all the magic happen is Trent Denson from Spread the Positive. And Cammie's in the house too. Oh, yeah, Cammie is over there chewing on a bone. She's precious. She's you can't see her, girl. but just know she's adorable and she's, you know, praying up a storm for us. Um, so today is uh, kind of a follow-up episode for the last two that we've been talking about. If you've missed the previous episodes, we've really been talking a lot about Sabbath and how God calls us to rest, which is really, really hard to do in today's world. So um, quick funny story. Ashley and I had a different topic that we thought we were going to, you know, we, we, we want to show up prepared to the best of our ability. So we had it planned out. We had scriptures picked out. We thought we knew what we were going to talk about. And then Ashley said, is this what you have on your heart? And I said, you know, I don't know if, if it's a if it's a topic change, but I've got a confession to make. I've been really fickle emotionally this week. And I said, I you know, I was really good at observing the Sabbath last week. And every night I've tried to spend at least, you know, 30 minutes to an hour sitting quietly and reflecting. And because of that, my thoughts have been like ruminating more, right? There's been more idle time in my brain. Mm -hmm. And so when I say I've been fickle, like in the morning, I'm like, oh my goodness, I love my life. My life is so amazing. I'm just so filled with joy and love and gratitude. And then I'll come home in the evening after a long day and then just like, this isn't where I want to be. I, you know, I want X, Y, and Z to happen. Why is this not where it needs to be? Yes. And it's like that, that idle time in my brain, if I'm not careful, can really kind of almost spiral. Um, and then a lot of like negative thoughts are coming up. Mm -hmm. And so um, Ashley <laughs> said that she could kind of resonate with that. And so we, we kind of realized that if we're both feeling it and we are doing our best to be prayed up and respect the Sabbath, that clearly this is something we need to um, talk about and invite God really into the mix for because this is something I've noticed like in this journey of trying to have more quiet time going yeah. to the monastery and respecting the Sabbath doing all these things um, I have felt God giving me that revelation of like like it's okay to be sitting in this quiet more yes. but it's uncomfortable yeah. it is incredibly uncomfortable so I know you and I have talked about that how does it feel for you to actually sit still it is so hard <laughs> um silence and solitude those are two words that i feel like just keep being brought back to my mind and my spirit and i feel like it's so that i can have more quiet time with god because i was just telling jen a minute ago like where is the time like i want to be in my bible more and i want to you know i just want to have more time with god and i think he's showing me that there is time but instead of surrendering it to him i'm listening to podcast or music or mindlessly like listening to a tv show in the background while i'm doing something else and it's like i constantly have stimulation yes yeah, stimulation <laughs> yeah and he's calling me to just more silence and i've noticed that when i do that like like i think about people and i remember to like pray for them or like just like different things like that um but also it's incredibly hard to do i don't like being bored and i don't like not having something to actively do and it really is honestly because i feel like with too much of that like some of my thoughts can kind of like turn on me mm -hmm. you know yeah that's or, what was happening to yeah, me this week it was yeah. like oh we're spiraling where'd that come from or like <laughs> doubts start to creep in yeah. or different fears or like like a little bit of anxiety things you've repressed yes, started bubbling up, back yeah. up and maybe it's maybe God's showing me that instead of actually giving it to him and like fully trusting him in those matters I'm yeah. distracting myself yeah so some of the things that maybe I need to be more open with him about or 
take to him basically to sum it up instead of doing that because it's uncomfortable sometimes it, it just is um instead of doing that I just find myself distracting myself instead yeah. like that's oh, okay I'm gonna listen to a podcast or whatever <laughs> and, and it's not that all the because you know that's a tech I mean that's really a, a form of self-medication right mm -hmm. is it's a coping strategy mm -hmm. is to distract and not let our minds wander um which you know to some extent it's it's okay to do that good godly things that are glorifying to him right like i'll do it i'm obsessed with youtube shorts mm -hmm. and most of them are are about scripture or they're they're honoring to to god like there are things that are pointing me back to him but you can't just do that right. and if it's time like you need to really get honest with yourself mm -hmm. right if it's time that you've specifically budgeted for quiet time your phone doesn't need to be there with you right, right? and how hard I'm not going to be tempted. Yeah. Well, and just watch people. Like as a social experiment, watch people. If you're sitting in a group of people, if there's a few seconds of silence, everybody's going to grab their phone. Yeah. You know, even sitting in the backyard with my husband, like we'll we'll just be sitting there. And if we're not actively engaged in conversation, it's just automatic yes. to pick up your phone. Yeah. Um, we're we're almost kind of conditioned to do that because we are in a world where we are just constantly Being bombarded similar. yeah every time you get a text message or a notification from facebook or instagram um you're just constantly bombarded mm -hmm. by all of these notifications and so this you know it's lighting up the dopamine centers in your brain um you're getting that little hit of dopamine every time and so that really um that really facilitates even more of this resistance that we have to quote unquote boredom yes right um and it's it's interesting because I will tell you, I still struggle with it, but so much less, like I used to be where I couldn't sit still for more than 30 seconds, like seriously, like sit still, no noise for more than 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Like it was agonizing yeah. for me. And now like, not always, but there are times where I can sit at the monastery. I sat for two and a half hours and just watched the birds. Yeah. And so there's technically s some things going on, yeah. but watching the birds, listening to the, the, you know, the lake and everything. Um, but it's, it's just for most of us, it's very uncomfortable to sit in that silence because our, our not to get too nerdy on it, but like our dopamine receptors are, are all jacked up, mm -hmm. right? Because we're mm -hmm. constantly overstimulated. Right. So when we do something that is not stimulating, that is, you know, maybe more mundane, yeah. it feels even more boring yeah. than what it would have felt to past generations that aren't constantly overstimulated so um this is a very practical tip that i actually give to a lot of my patients who i notice are really living in that like hyper stressed um state of mind that most of us struggle with is to do a dopamine detox and what does that look like exactly what we did at the yeah. monastery right you go somewhere that is very under stimulating mm -hmm. and you intentionally that could be your backyard mm -hmm. right unless you have you know a bunch of screaming children and barking dogs <laughs> yeah, um but it could be your bathroom it could be make you know running drawing a bath or or being in the shower a little longer than you should be right but just time where you're not bombarded with all of the notifications and even if they're good notifications yeah. like we just need to we need to in the beginning force ourselves to to gradually increase that amount of solitude yeah. um and then the the part we talked about after that is what do you do okay let's say you've nailed it you forced yourself to sit there for an hour but now you start going into those repressed feelings or bubbling well, that's up. what i was going to point that's what i was going to point out is that w the reason why maybe not all of the time but a lot of the reasons why we're Avoiding reaching it. for this stimulation is right. so that we can avoid uncomfortable feelings mm -hmm. like the reason sometimes that we reach for the phone you know in 30 seconds of silence is because like some feeling is coming up that is uncomfortable and we don't mm -hmm. want to feel that so like let mm -hmm. me scroll instead or let mm -hmm. me like turn the tv on instead to kind of like drown that out yeah. um but well one thing that we were talking about is that feelings are not like a bad thing right right they aren't something to like flee from it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you if you're having like some type of an emotion but like what did you say they're a piece to the equation yeah they're, they're a piece, like a signal they're, yeah exactly they're part of the equation and your your thoughts and your feelings are giving you information mm -hmm. they're letting you know um maybe some some deeper roots some areas that you're not especially fear mm -hmm. fears and anxieties well, i was about to give that example yeah. it's like anxiety okay so like it points out what you're not 
not trusting God in. Well, yeah, like for example, sometimes I have this thought of like, like loneliness, like it mm. starts to creep in and I'm yeah. like, oh, I'm gonna be like alone forever. Um, and what that is, like the anxiety that comes from that is like fear, right? Mm. And what that fear is saying, if I really sit with it and allow myself to like process it, is it saying that I don't trust God to give me a full life basically, right? right? I don't trust him to give me, you know, rich, deep friendships and companionship and community that, um, yeah, that basically he's going to let me just be alone and be lonely forever. And even, Mm -hmm. I I love this quote that I saw on Instagram, like even if you do go through a season of of loneliness, um, it was saying like, even if I'm the loneliest of the loneliest, I still have God. Mm -hmm. And so the truth is that we're never alone, but like, if I have that anxiety well up within me and instead of processing through it, I just pick up my phone, then I'm not allowing the Holy spirit to bring me back to the truth that is in God. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I think when we first started having this walk together, we kept making the joke about like, you know, God is constantly pruning us because what you just described is an example of God pruning you. When you let him give you that reflect, you didn't run from it. You're like, okay, God, I feel this loneliness. What does it mean? That's allowing God to prune you. And how Mm -hmm. different this is from a year ago when we were sitting at ECC in the chapel and we were making that joke about, no, God, not that branch, you know, (laughs) because the pruning is uncomfortable. Like you said, that's why we reach for the phone is because it's uncomfortable to sit with those emotions Mm -hmm. or those fears um, and to really like invite God into that and say, okay, God, I know that this feeling isn't from you. Mm -hmm help me work through this, help me see what the root of this is. So, cause you don't wanna just, we don't, we, some of those deeper seated things, we don't wanna just prune those branches off. We wanna really get it at the root, mm-hmm. right? Um, and and all fear is rooted in a lack of trust in God. Like right. you said, not trusting him to give you a full life. It's the same thing with me and the, and the babies. There are times where I like, I'm so happy and I look at my dogs and I'm like, you know what? This life is great. And then like an hour later, I'm like, I want my babies. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like so frustrated mm-hmm. that I feel like God has promised me these, you know, and there's lots of great scriptures about how God wants children for us. And they're the, the arrows in our quiver. And I'm like, and I'll get frustrated. But what does that mean? That means that I don't at the root it's saying that I don't trust my life will be good and glorifying to God unless I'm a mom right and I know that that's garbage but I have to sit with that feeling and look at it and say okay what does this feeling really mean and then I have to invite God into that to to help me let go of it and don't you think all those like revelations and all those ways that he speaks to us like they happen in the quiet time right yes like if we're constantly running from the uncomfortable feelings Mm -hmm. that um those thoughts initially bring to us if we're running from them forever then we'll never get to the point of god and essentially like delivering us from it does that make sense 100 percent. yeah and like when you were talking about like pruning i'm gonna butcher this and i don't have my bible or my phone (laughs) but it was jesus talking in john and he was saying like i am the um the vine and you are the branches yes um and the the branches that don't produce fruit they get they get cut off but the ones that do they get pruned so that they can bear more fruit Mm -hmm. and if you think about like these like um what are those trees crepe myrtles or whatever or any tree i think any i'm not a nature person i don't have a green thumb (laughs) but like essentially i've seen our neighbor has four trees um and i remember the first time i saw them do this i think that they original owners moved out the ones that planted the trees and new ones moved in and like one of the first things that they did was chop the trees and i was like why did they cut down those beautiful trees they're all ugly and like stumpy now but give it like four weeks and i'm like oh they are so luscious and so beautiful like they were bigger (laughs) than before and so like that's kind of like what god does to us is like it's that pruning process but we I think the thing about it is, is it's like God wants us to surrender to him and he's not, I I don't want to like box him in, but like most of the time he's not going to like run us down, like chasing after us with scissors, right? Like we have to slow down our lives and our minds and allow him to do his work. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. So, so yeah. basically that pruning comes from surrender. Yeah. And that's why when we would joke, like, not that branch, yeah. right? But like resisting that ch- yeah. that pruning. Because there were parts of us. Yeah. But not too much. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> there were parts of us that we really don't want to. I mean, when it says die to self, no, that's so uncomfortable. that is hard. Yeah, like, because dying to self means letting go of all the things that 
this world has to offer. Mm -hmm. And even though this world is a cold, dark place sometimes, it's got some fun things. I like sugar. It tastes good. It doesn't think, do my body any good, though. Right. That part. <laughs> I think what it is is that because we are, like, human, yeah. these things that are, are temporarily pleasurable in whatever way, like sugar, for example, mm -hmm. we want to stick to that temporary instant gratification right. but we know like for example today somebody brought by these uh sugar cookies to work as a thank you for something that we did for them and before i took them to the break room i was like let me have one and as soon as i took the last bite instantly my stomach was hurting i felt like crap and i was like why have i done this again <laughs> and it's like i have that knowledge and i know yeah. it's not good for me but in that temporary moment i was like oh that looked good you yeah. know and like i feel like that's what it is like in the yes. temporary it's it feels good yeah. but like long term it actually ha there's no life in it yeah. yeah and that's that's everything that's super yeah. fleshy right it's yeah. not just sugar like there that example could span to so many Literally, different things yes. that we struggle yes. with uh, which is again why he calls us to, to to die to our flesh and to pick up your cross and to live like him mm -hmm. um that's another we could do a whole episode on that yeah. just relearning mm -hmm. that lesson a hundred times mm -hmm. um, but in that quiet place you're spiraling um, negative thoughts are coming up you're now recognizing you need to pray and have God enter into that situation show you what those feelings mean um, don't run from it um, and if we uh, if we look at where that is in scripture too it's it's pretty cool so this is one we've talked about a lot take this every thought captive to Christ favorite, favorite scriptures. Yeah. Jack Christians was the first one to teach it to yes. me yes and it's funny because I always just say take every thought captive to Christ. I just say that one tiny little yeah. short piece I of it. I forgot about it when I was telling you to look it up, but I I hang on to it's the beginning. It's so much it's so much weightier and yeah. more awesome than just that take every thought captive. Like yeah. you can use that as a tool. Like just that little snippet is really helpful for what we're talking about because you notice your thoughts are drifting, take it back to Christ, mm -hmm. right? Um because sometimes your thoughts aren't even just your flesh, right? Oh, I'm hungry. Hey, I'm focusing on God right now. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I've got to-do lists. I, hey, I'm focusing on God right now. Like mm -hmm. keep taking those thoughts captive, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not thoughts that are just your flesh. Sometimes the, I mean, it is a battlefield of the mind it and is. the enemy can throw you darts during mm -hmm. that quiet time. So this, this scripture verse um, kind of addresses some of that too. Um, deeper than just taking the thought captive. It's kind of like the how you do that too. So this is 2 Corinthians 10 verses four through six, and I'm reading the New King James Version. For the weapons of warfare are not carnal, which is flesh. The weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I love that, especially the beginning. The weapons yes. of our warfare are, are not, not carnal. carnal. And it reminds it's me not a battle of flesh. It's a battle of the mind. Literally, I was going to say well, you. of um, Ephesians somewhere in like chapter six. This is not a battle of flesh and blood, but a battle of like basically a battle against the enemy. Yes, and it's like, yeah. how do we how do we fight that battle? Yeah. It's not by our own strength, but by strength in God. Yeah. And so like even when we're having all those thoughts, it's not even like. I think that's what it is, is it's not like us striving by our own strength to take them captive. Right. It's not like yeah. you just pray harder yeah. and think harder. But it's giving them to God, like, okay, God, like, I need you to help me bring me back to you. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And it, it's so funny because, you know, we've both struggled with this too, being very like works and performance based. Mm -hmm. um, even just now, as I was describing it, I, I was being a little bit like, okay, I'm going to do it on my own. I'm going to keep reining my thoughts in. Mm -hmm. And there is a part of that. But, it almost sounds like semantics, but it's not. It's the heart posture behind mm -hmm. it, right? Is whether or not you're roping in your thoughts or whether you're like, God, my thoughts keep drifting. I need you to help me. Mm -hmm. It's still taking every thought captive, but recognizing that's the difference. Recognizing you really can't win that battle on your own. And that's yeah. kind of the point, right? Yeah. He, he doesn't expect you or want you to win that battle of the mind, the battle of the racing, spiraling thoughts. You're never going to win that by yourself. And he doesn't want you to win it by yourself. Right. He wants relationship. He wants you to come to him with open arms, sit at his feet and say, God, I know who I am. 
I know that historically my thoughts have raced. Sometimes they spiral. So help me protect this time. And if my thoughts race, help me bring them back to you. And then just keep praying that prayer. Every time your to-do list comes up, every time your tummy rumbles, just keep praying that prayer for God to enter into that quiet time and help you stay focused on it. And like one of the things that I feel like I'm learning is that it takes time. And that's why there's so much grace for us. Like we have to remember that God is so gracious and then receive that grace. So like, for example, if you are trying to have more of that quiet time where you are you know, waiting to see if God has anything to tell you or if you're trying to pray for people and you find your mind is just racing all over the place, don't beat yourself up over that, right. you know. Um, recognize it, pray, and then just like keep, you know, go back to the last Go back to what you were doing. Does that make sense? Yes. Like, don't like get frustrated. Don't feel shameful. Like, none of those mm-hmm. things are of God. Right. Those things block your ability to hear and focus on God. But even. just like I used to do, um, Headspace, uh, oh, yeah. meditation app, like the calm I, app, yeah. And things like that. I just that. stopped pay- paying for it. <laughs> but one of the things that they used to say um, was, if you re- recognize, like in your meditation or whatever, if you recognize that your thoughts have started to wander and you're thinking about to do list or whatever like take note of what you were thinking and they said just send it away and it's like such a gentle thing but like i still do that now where if i'm trying to like pray or whatever and i realize like oh i've gotten i've gone down a rabbit hole like i try to remember to just recognize that and then just send it away and it's like okay god thank you for bringing me back and just pick back up where where you were and i I love how peaceful and not disrupted you were in that example there um because we've we've talked a couple times on and off mic about how like you know the enemy's throwing these starts at you and that it feels like it's this huge battle but god god has been really kind to show me this visual of those darts um kind of turning into a mosquito and you just swat it away like oh that's annoying but it's no big deal like don't get riled up by some like even being like loving happy people sometimes we have dark thoughts like Mm -hmm. that's just human like i love my life but there are days where i'm just like wow life is hard jesus i'm ready for you to come back because this mess i'm not about it Mm -hmm. and then i could have a moment where i'm like oh that thought was from the enemy and i'm angry that he sent me that thought but that's disruptive too so recognize it as what it is Mm -hmm. which is an obnoxious mosquito it's just it's arrows that aren't going to harm you anyway and again i'm not talking like this is easy and there's there are days i do it and there are days that i'm not successful with it but that's the goal right you 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 hear one of those thoughts and you're like i know that's not god Mm -hmm. i know that is a lie just gonna brush send it, it away. send it away i'm yeah. just gonna brush it off it's not that big a deal don't let it rile you up yeah. and distract um you know and, and change the posture that your heart was in because right. that heart posture um is, is really what connects us our spirit because god is spirit right and that's what connects our spirit to god is being in that like peaceful gracious loving place and ready to receive so if you get riled up because you're mad that some thoughts snuck in um that's just as disruptive as the thought itself you know so i like that just just send it on just brush it away and i remember when we were off mic like you reminded me of the beginning of that scripture i felt like it was just like if we can just like break down that whole scripture i feel like that is like the antidote for like racing thoughts so like the weapons of our warfare are not carnal so they don't come from ourselves or yes. our own ability but they come from god if they're so they're mighty in god and then it talks about like for bringing down strongholds and yes. basically like every high thought or argument that goes against the knowledge of god is uh-huh. that what it says something yeah. like that yeah and so like and casting down arguments yeah and so we were talking about i, I, I didn't want to touch on this we were talking about how to know if a thought yes. is of god or was it the these enemy. arguments and these yeah. other strongholds yeah because okay i had that thought because sometimes god does give us hard tr- hard truths right and that is that part of that refining pruning pruning yeah. that is just what he's doing um so how do you tell the difference exactly and so i wanted to give the example of like how i felt one time when god was giving me kind of like a hard truth mm-hmm. uh just about me some some things that i wasn't aware of that were in my heart and he had to show me so that I could bring it to him, repent, and, like, ask for him to help me um, be more like him. And, like, as he was telling me those things, I didn't feel shamed. I didn't feel condemned. I didn't, you know, I didn't have any of those 
more negative feelings. Like I felt, I was telling Jen, I said, I felt free. Like I felt grateful to now have this awareness because I felt like I was blinded and I didn't see how it was affecting me and how it was affecting my relationships with other people. And so now I was grateful to have this information. I just, I felt loved. I felt seen like it was, do do you see the difference here? Like that thought was a hard truth. He wasn't telling me necessarily like, girl, you're so great. (laughs) You're nailing it. Right. But so he was revealing some things that were hard, but I didn't feel condemned. I felt loved and set free. Right. And I feel like that is kind of one of the ways you can tell and if it's of God or if it's of the enemy. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's almost like um, w- as you were talking, I saw kind of like like if you had um, if you had like mud mm-hmm. on your arm, and and God's like, oh, you got mud on your arm, mm-hmm. and He's just like wiping it away. You mm-hmm. wouldn't be like, hey, that's part of me. Yeah. Don't get rid of that right. mud. You recognize it as what yes. it is, something that's not supposed right. to be on the canvas that God made. Right. And so when He points those things out to you, even though. Maybe you've had that mud caked on there for a long time. Maybe you put that mud there. But if God says it needs to go, thank you. Take Take it. it. Yeah, prune that branch. Um, And then I've heard Jack Christians say it this way tons of times, and I I love this as well. Um, The Holy Spirit convicts, Mm -hmm. the devil condemns. Mm -hmm. So if it's something that... um, uplifts and and it's tricky because like you said it could be a hard truth Mm -hmm. so it's like how does a hard truth uplift but it's because you know that it's something that's going to make you better yeah make you more like jesus yeah Yeah, it's almost like getting coaching is encouraging right versus somebody just beating you down so if it makes you if it if you feel condemned and and judged as opposed to like convicted like hey you can do this better right versus like you're a piece garbage right totally Totally even if it's the same piece of mud they're talking about like it's it's the way in which it is presented to you um also i feel like another one that i've heard through many different sermons repeated um is that if it's from the enemy it'll feel very hurried like Mm -hmm. god's never gonna be like never you better go or you're gonna miss your opportunity that boat's about to leave that that just isn't the time frame on which god works right Right. now if he says go there is usually an like an authority authority behind it and you want to go right that's completely different like the the few times in my life i felt god be like now Mm -hmm. it's now Mm -hmm. you're like yes sir let's go you feel it it's a conviction right it's a drive to do it versus how the enemy does it where he's like you're gonna miss it Mm -hmm. you're gonna fail you it's it's about to leave if you don't go right now you're gonna miss it Uh and that's a that's hurry that's that's fear of missing out that's fear 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 of loss right exactly right so encouragement even on the hard things that's from god right and then also like to piggyback off that like if it's confusing like if you're if you're being sent down a spiral or if it's like just like because god is not a god of confusion he's not a god of chaos he's a god of order and so like if it's making you fearful if it's if it's pretty much bringing up anything that's not like the fruit of the spirit Mm -hmm. (laughs) then that's kind of a, a way to know like okay this is probably not God. Therefore, this is a thought that, right. you know, I need to surrender to him. I need to invite him into mm-hmm. and to take captive for lack of a better word. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then if it goes against the word of God, which I is was gonna one say that more next. reason stay in to your stay Bible. in your word. Um, and, how do you know if you don't read? How are you able to discern yeah, those things? Exactly. And, and you know, it's... <laughs> It's a pretty big book. So if you <laughs> haven't made it all the way through yet, um, it's okay. Like pray about it and God will God will show you, yeah. give you um, reflection and revelation on it. Um, and it, it is it is a big book, but it also like it. it's telling the story of the same God throughout it. So no matter where you are in it, God is consistent, consistently the same. And so before you read, ask for God to reveal to you his heart in scripture. Right. So that way, like, no matter where you are, you don't have to have made it all the way from Genesis to Revelation. Right. Every time you read, you should be seeing, um, okay, so this is of God. Okay, this is not how God would respond. Yeah. You know? And knowing those characteristics of God yeah. helps you, helps with your discernment to know, are these feelings, are these thoughts coming from God based on do they line up with his character? Mm-hmm. You know, and if these are things that are really just kind of making me feel like I'm getting beat down, like I'm a piece of garbage. 
but that doesn't right. really line up with the, right, with the, the heart of God. The heart of God. Yeah. Um, you know, but if you're like, oof, I'm really feeling like there's some things I need to get in line. Um, and I'm feeling really encouraged to, to do, um, maybe to do better and to, to, then that's more in line with how God would <laughs> speak to his children. He yeah. loves, you know, yeah. um, that's it. It's it's been a struggle to to really rein it in, um, but it's been good. Yeah. I, I'm I am proud that we have both leaned into that time more, yeah. and I know that it's already getting better. Yeah. <laughs> like those times are getting better. Oh, this is the last thing um, that you said off mic too, um, is that the more we have those times the better everything else gets. Oh, so yeah. you said, um, you said, oh, Lord, this is a good, great prayer. Um, Lord, let, um, let all of my life flow from an abundance, a place of abundance from the quiet time I spend with yeah. you. So having that's, lots of, of quiet time, yes. quality quiet time with yes. the Lord is like filling your cup. This is how I And it's gonna it. overflow yes. to all areas of your life. Like me, you, us, like not just me and Jen, like everyone, we are like vases, right? And yeah. we want to be so filled up with God and so filled up with the Holy Spirit that it's like pouring out into everything yeah. that we're doing. It's like overflowing and exactly. like, that's where I want to be. Spoiler alert, I am not there yet. Right now, <laughs> we have not arrived. I feel like I am like, Lord, please. Currently in room. Just another drop, please, God, I'm tired. <laughs> so thirsty. <laughs> but he's working uh, in me and he will get me there. I really have a lot of faith that he will. Um, I just got to stop being stimulated all, all the time yeah, <laughs> and allow running from the, allow the myself to, to face some of that boredom um yeah. oh and one more thing since we're talking about like silence and solitude and like all that stuff um a cool thing so like recently here some things happened um in life not to me personally it's more indirect to people that i know um that had me kind of like what am I praying for? You know, like I'm praying God and I'm asking for things and I'm trying to like intercede for people. And sometimes it just feels like nothing's going right. So like, why are you having me do this? And then I, he reminded me, he was like, you don't have to understand how every, like everything right now, mm -hmm. you have to trust me. And he reminded me, he restored me, he brought me back. But then I also was just like, God, show me, show me that it's worth it like show me that my prayers are working and i got a text message i won't share like too much but i got a text message today from somebody that i've been praying for for a long time and god was like see i'm at work all the time you yes. just have to trust me so if you're also growing weary just know you can tell god that and he will encourage you himself because he loves you and he cares about you I love that. Yeah. and he's no respecter of persons so mm -hmm. and it doesn't look exactly the same for every person so don't don't be sad if you don't get a text from right someone you've been right for. yeah but, but that's just an encouragement because yeah. sometimes i feel like i have to like sometimes those are feelings that i feel like i have to stifle down yeah. to where i'm like no Is you know better right but it's like that's just an example of what bringing all of your emotions even the uncomfortable ones to the lord can do it only brings you closer it only takes you deeper that was the moral of that story I love that. and yeah. you got that from being in that quiet time yes right had you not been in that quiet time with him you wouldn't have even recognized that you were having those feelings that's of true like is this all worth it yeah you know that's true um so those just do it do those quiet moments yeah. it's so hard oh it's it worth it last thing and then i'm done the real last thing Go <laughs> the ahead. real last thing um the last last thing um i have I was semi recently kind of convicted about the way I spoke about it because we keep saying bored, right? Oh, yeah. um, and for me, so this, I hope this is a fun challenge for, for y'all out there too, and for you too, Ashley. Um, if we wouldn't even call it bored, right? Instead of saying, I need to allow myself time to get bored, because bored has such a negative, negative. connotation of like, I don't want to be into this. So I've started, I've stopped saying, cause I used to say that all that time. Like I hate being bored. Like I, I'm not good at sitting still. I would say things like that. And the enemy's like, yes, that's right. That's you hate right. It. You're you not hate good at being it. Don't bored. Even do it. You don't like to read either. <laughs> like he tells me all these things. Um, and so now instead I say, I don't get bored. If I'm still and quiet, it's on purpose. Yeah. I am intentionally, intentional. um, I am intentionally budgeting time for the Lord or like, a weird example but like i had to go to the dmv and there i was not bored i was so appreciative to have quiet time that even in the line i was just sitting there and i was breathing and i was just praying so 
that's not bored right. at that point. So I, boredom is not even something that I allow to enter into the works for me. If there is quiet time, it is on purpose or I'm grateful for it mm -hmm. one way or the other. I Whereas, love that right? though, for real. So we're, we're scrubbing bored from, from our equation. Yeah. Any quiet time well, you, you or stillness, we're going to appreciate it. It's a heart of gratitude for it. You know, it's like, I appreciate this Lord. Thank you for this time. And now like bring my heart to you, whether you have something to say or not, just like, let me be in your presence. Yeah, I, like I didn't that. have that for even a long at the DMV. Time. I didn't even think I needed that. I was somebody. I'm to some extent. I still am. Go 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 all the time, and I thought that was a really good thing, yeah. right? And I didn't realize that even me, um, that I even need stillness and quiet and like you said with the the vase being refilled i need that refill too you know and i think that's where a lot of a lot of my burnout a lot of my anxiety a lot of my gut issues came from running on high drive i was either excited or anxious right. those two nothing in between um like that for like 32 years yeah. right um and and so to reframe it to where i'm like nope not bored i appreciate this quiet time because it is not it is a gift like we talked about last time the sabbath is a gift not a chore right and it's something that i finally appreciate something that i ran from before mm -hmm. something that i didn't even think i wanted mm -hmm. and now i'm like it's it is a precious gift and yeah. i'm so grateful for it and i'm yeah. grateful for that revelation yeah. because that's where restoration that's where renewal of the mind comes mm -hmm. um is from that rest and refill from the lord and you you get that in quiet time and prayer and and that that solitude that that we dedicate to him on the sabbath but even even every day even yeah. in just those little quiet moments um that you spend with him and it's so worth it it's so worth it so don't get bored <laughs> appreciate that yes solitude. be grateful for that intentional quiet time with the lord <laughs> That's it. i like it well, i hope this was encouraging to y'all um share it with somebody mm -hmm. that you feel like needs this reminder mm -hmm. um I, I think this is really something that is very countercultural. So if you have a friend or a family member that you feel like um, would be touched by this message, please share it with them. Um, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, do all the things that help the algorithm make the magic happen um, just so that we can get uh, some of these messages that we truly believe God is asking us to share. Again, we're not up here because we're bored. We pray every single time before we uh, enter onto the, onto the scene that God would do something through us because yeah. we know how much he loves his children and... Uh, um, we're just we're just vessels for that love to, to be poured out. And email us if you want us to pray for you or someone yeah. you know. We like praying. We actually will pray for you if you mm -hmm. email us too. With all that quiet time, all that silence That's and it. solitude. So hello, much. so hello. much. We'll add you to the list. <laughs> um, Ashley Hillsman at iCloud.com. A S H L E Y H I L L S M A N at iCloud.com. Or just That's respond it. to Jen's email if you get emailed this podcast. That's it. Let's go. We love you guys. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.